Hey, comic book fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. And fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to do that all important comic book review so you, the fans, can make a decision on what comic books to buy. Today, fans, we're going to be talking about <clears throat> Star Wars issue number two. Now, the first issue was a phenomenal read, uh, played all kinds of tributes to the original Star Wars trilogy. And uh, it, it was phenomenal. So does this one follow it up in that same form or fashion? Gotta love the cover here. You have Darth Vader and Imperial Walkers in the background. And you got Han Solo and Chewie. And Han Solo just basically going sh to Chewie like, shut up, be quiet. You know, Darth Vader's right behind us. So Jason Aaron's our writer. John Cassidy does the artwork. And once again in this book, uh, the artwork is 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 great it's it's really well done uh we get to see some cool scenes here uh in the beginning of the issue with uh luke skywalker and darth vader doing some battle against each other doing the lightsaber duels which is really awesome you get to see uh darth vader actually handling lightsabers two of them in, in, at one time which you know you never get to see that great detail in certain parts of the book where it comes to the Imperial Walker breaking through uh, the weapons supply base and whatnot. And all the characters, yes, once again, they look like uh, their movie counterparts. So uh, I really enjoyed the artwork in this in this particular issue. There's a cool action scene with Luke Skywalker with a blaster. So that was really fun. So what was the story about? And what did I think about this particular issue? Well, we got to see uh, in the last issue that the Rebels wind up going to Simu 1 and they go into the largest weapons facility that, that, that the Empires have to have. And uh, little did they know, they came across some, uh, some slaves and now they're forced to rescue these slaves. And little did they know that Darth Vader was going to be on this moon because this is the one that they were bargaining with and they didn't realize that. So let's say the plan kind of went south. Uh, for the Rebels, and when we last left off, we wound up seeing Darth Vader meet face-to-face -face with Luke Skywalker, and um, we get to see that here, and we get to see the young Skywalker that pretty much we've seen from Star Wars, his inability to use the lightsaber, um, you know, and Darth Vader kind of just dismisses him he's kind of just like ah oh, you're pathetic you're not waste my you waste my time and uh the one thing the one part of this dialogue that kind of got me a little bit was is that he did he knows that obi-wan trained him but he doesn't recognize i guess that he's skywalker I, I i thought that he would know but i guess uh he doesn't realize that and he doesn't realize that that lightsaber i think was his lightsaber uh when you know he was anakin skywalker so but that's just a minor nitpick. The battle itself was pretty cool. And then the next thing you see is right when Darth Vader's going to finish him off, you wind up seeing this Imperial Walker come down. And yes, uh, Han and Leia are sitting there driving this thing. And it's just awesome. I, I just really enjoyed the moments here. And there's great character moments between Leia and Han, that bickering that they constantly have. And when you're reading this book, if you're familiar with the movies, obviously – these are the voices that's going to be in your head while you're reading this particular issue. Um, so throughout the entire book, we wind up seeing Darth Vader trying to chase after these rebels, trying to stomp them. And uh, you get to see Han and Leia trying to stomp on Darth Vader with the with the Imperial uh, Walker. And he uses the Force to stop the machine. And uh, we're trying to get at the same time, Han's trying to get c 3 to launch the Falcon. And it's been grounded by these creatures called the scavengers. And they wind up tearing them apart. And he winds up, you know, surrendering to them. So there's some, you know, classic C-3PO moments in here as well. So, and there's lines in here, just like the last issue, that relate back to the original Star Wars movies, which you can appreciate as a Star Wars fan. You wind up seeing uh, Luke Skywalker take off on a speeder bike in here. And once the... Once Han and Leia get the cannons working on the Imperial Walker, they try to shoot um, Darth Vader. And it was just like, oh, damn, they're really taking him to school. And they wind up escaping for now. And once Darth Vader recovers, he is saying that there's something about this boy I need to know more about. And we wind up seeing, again, something from Star Wars uh, that you've seen from Empire Strikes Back and on is the mysterious face of Darth Vader 
where you get to see him uh, without his helmet, but it's all dark, and you get to see him use the force to get his helmet back on, and he and he turns a stormtrooper's helmet around so he can't see his uh, disfigured face. So again, another moment that you can appreciate. And uh, at the end of the issue, again, uh, you get to see him go after Luke Skywalker. So what did I think about this issue? Great issue, phenomenal, just as good as the first one. I thought all the character moments were there. The bickering between Han Solo and, Le and Han Solo and Leia were fantastic. Really like seeing the moments between Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, and we get to see Luke Skywalker just being really vulnerable. Doesn't believe in himself. Doesn't feel like he's ready to be a Jedi. He's just a typical farm boy. Uh, but then when he goes back to the way he grew up and uses things that he's familiar with, he's successful with that. So. Uh, it, it's cool to see Skywalker's um, development in the Force as time continues in this in this uh, series, and just seeing Darth Vader, yes, doing all kinds of high action things is very uh, it's phenomenal thing because again in the movies Darth Vader was active but only in lightsaber duels. You don't get to see him really do anything else except walk around and whatnot. So, and one of those other moments I really loved was the moment where his his mask was off. And they made it a thing to have his breathing sound different in the dialogue bubbles, which I really appreciated there as well. So this is a great book. Another five out of five stars for me for Star Wars issue number two. Uh, I can see this being the top book of the week easily uh, if there's nothing else that beats it. But this was a great, great issue. So guys, leave me your comments below what you thought of Star Wars issue number two. And fans, until the next comic book review, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off. Thanks for watching, fans. Take care. See you soon. Bye.